Polymorphic reverse shells with a USB rubber ducky, this time on Hack 5. For Hack 5, I'm Darren Kitchen taking a look at an awesome payload for the USB rubber ducky by one of my favorite developers. This is so cool. Check this out by Ofori, the reverse ducky polymorph payload. I'm here in Payload Hub checking it out. It says it's a TCP reverse shell executed in a hidden PowerShell, right? Using the magic of uh, Ducky Script 3. And this is so cool because as Ophir or Ofori says right here that one of the biggest problems when publishing payloads and exploits and proof of concepts is static detection. And what that essentially means is, hey, if I'm writing some code that's gonna do some nefarious stuff and then I use it, that's fine. But if we all use it, it's very obvious. So I love the way that that problem was solved uh, using DuckyScript 3.0. Uh, oh, fear goes on to say that if, you know, hundreds of thousands of people use your script, it's gonna get burned. So he created the reverse Ducky polymorph to fight static detection. Basically, every time this payload is run, your Ducky is going to change the variables and make it harder to pinpoint. Obviously, he goes on to say it's no guarantee of bypassing every antivirus, and that should go without saying, but it is an awesome technique to put in your arsenal when you're developing a payload, and I wanna demonstrate this one because it is just so wicked. So I've gone ahead and already uh, popped it into my copy of Payload Studio. I'm using 1.3 for this demonstration, and uh, it's pretty cool because it introduces some actual new elements of 1.3. So with this payload, we can see, obviously, we're attacking mainly Windows systems. The requirements are DuckyScript uh, you know, 3.0 device, so your USB rubber ducky, and Payload Studio 1.3. And this is going to go ahead and create a reverse shell. It's actually going to make it as simple, just use Netcat uh, as your listener. And then we use the uh, extension Detect Ready to, as quickly as possible, you know, do our delay. Uh, so we can actually take a look at our extension in there, but we can see if we hover over here that this extension is up to date and official, ready to go. And then we've got our defines here. I love the fact that we've got these set in defines, so it makes it easy that you can just go ahead and change this, the IP address and port out for your attack. You don't have to go digging into the code to figure out where it's going to be referenced. So right here, all we need to do to configure this is to set up the IP address of our attack machine. And in this case, in my lab, and as you probably have at home as well, you've got your, you know, the, the box that you set up your payload with, but then you've got your box that you test your payload on. And of course your box, in, in this case, I've got a uh, Kali Linux box that I use as my listener. So let me just real quick check if config uh, WLAN zero. And yeah, so my IP address here on my uh, test network is 192.168.86.62. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, come over here to my computer and set up that address in my payload. So 192.168.86.62. And I'm going to leave it as the default port 4444. I recommend you get creative with this. And let's take a look at the rest of the code. Essentially, this big block of variable declarations here is going to create all of these little gibberish variables and what is going to be stored inside of these are actually a random, either in this case, a random number, a random letter, a random lowercase letter, and it's the actual key codes of those. So within this internal variable is going to be uh, the scan code. And if you've done you know, the, the online course or read through the documentation or the book, you'll understand that the scan codes are those kind of hexadecimal equivalent of, you know, the letters on your keyboard uh, or, or the keys on your keyboard. And so what this means is as opposed to, you know, just using those, those uh, internal variables for every time we want to get a new, I guess in this case, a, uh, a lower, a random number key code, we're actually going to store it in this variable so that we always get the same one. Let me give you an example here. So. Let's just throw it in here and if say, if I do um, random underscore, I don't know, letter, right? I'm going to get a, a new random letter 
every, si every time I reference that, okay? But if I want to always be able to say, say once, a, say a random letter, and then be able to use that multiple times, that's exactly what this line here is doing. It's saying var gibberish2 is going to be random letter key code, so that whenever I want to reference this later, I can go ahead and, uh, well, in this case, we're gonna inject it. So after this uh, set of declarations, we do a little delay 500, GUI R, as we know and love, will pull up the Windows Run dialog, throw in a little PowerShell, window hidden. So a lot of alias is being used here to keep things as short as possible. And so now you're gonna have to visualize this because actually with that Windows hidden, we're not gonna be able to see this. So we might run this twice and see, you know, what it looks like hidden and, and not hidden to the naked eye. But uh, what we're gonna be doing is injecting, hey, all right, the dollar sign. So we're declaring a variable in PowerShell. So dollar sign. And in this case, it's going to be those four variables that we set before. And as we know, each of these, so gibberish, gibberish two, gibberish three, gibberish four, is going to be, in this case, a random number, a random uh, letter, a random lowercase letter, and then another random letter. And what that means is, if I run this on my target, I'm going to get a unique, uh, a unique four character variable. But if you run this with your USB rubber ducky, you're gonna get something different. Every single time we run this, we're gonna get something different. And if we continue to, to run through this, it's actually nicely commented. We can see how we're opening up different sockets and you know we're uh, creating streams and, and uh, all of the other fun stuff that this PowerShell does. Uh, and at the very end, uh, it's actually gonna go ahead and end the payload with a caps lock command. And the cool thing about that is we're going to be able to inject this on our target system. It's going to happen in a hidden PowerShell window, which is just mind blowing how that works. And then we're gonna be able to glance at the keyboard and when the keyboard light you know, for caps lock turns on, or I guess if it's already on, turns off, then we'll have confirmation that our payload has at least gotten to the end. And so we can unplug our USB rubber ducky and, uh, and away we go. So, um, you could also do the same thing with like LED underscore G to set the LED to green or whatever have you. Um, I, I might not on a real engagement keep this because you know your your target will have now have its caps lock key on, but whatever have you. Let's let's go ahead and get this uh, loaded up on our USB rubber ducky. So I've set the address. We're gonna leave port four 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 four. Generate that payload. Download overwrite the existing inject.bin on my USB rubber ducky that's connected here in arming mode. And I'm gonna be a good Samaritan and eject that drive. And now let's go ahead and deploy this. So we know a couple of things. Obviously we are going to need a listener. So let's go ahead on our Kali Linux box, set up a netcat listener on port 4444. All right, so that's running. And now let's come over to our target, this little Windows box here. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the USB rubber ducky. And it should happen pretty quickly because we've got that uh, you know, detect ready extension. All right, we've got our hidden PowerShell. And honestly, outside the fact that I can tell you that the caps lock light is on, there's not really a lot of other indication. So that's probably why that's thrown in at the end of the payload. Um, so if we come over to our Kali box though, things don't look different until we press enter. And now suddenly, what? I've got a shell on this box. Hang on, let's go to the desktop and DIR. And okay, there's, there's no files there. All right, well, that makes sense. If we come over here and take a look at the desktop, I don't see any files. Let's, uh, let's put a file on there, echo. Foobar, and we're going to redirect that into I am inside your computer dot txt. And now when I come over to the Windows box, oh my God, is that freaky or what? Actually, if I, I wonder if I can just go ahead and Dell, uh, I am inside your computer dot txt. I wonder if it updates live and oh, Deleted, gone. That was so cool. I absolutely love this. This is a brilliant example of using some obfuscation techniques in your payload. Not only are, uh, is this using 
um, variables to create random characters that are going to be random for every single iteration or, 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 or you know, uh, a deployment of this payload. But, you know, we also are using a hidden PowerShell that's being typed into that. That's the thing, honestly, when I went to run this for the very first time, the thing that blew my mind the most was that if, if we take a look at our Windows box and we do that GUI R, we're running a hidden with that TAC WH, that's making it a hidden PowerShell window, and yet we're still typing into something that doesn't exist. If we look at the bottom of the screen here, I don't have a PowerShell, you know, minimized. I would have to go into my task manager to actually find this PowerShell and end the task to kill that reverse shell. And you know, to the naked eye, it is that that is fantastic. And I love how this means that it defeats some of the most basic static detection. Actually, I think you could even go uh, a little further with this payload. This is a perfect example of where you might want to use uh, jitter, which we should do an entire episode on. But essentially, if I just did underscore dollar sign underscore jitter enabled, and then set that to true, we now have a payload where, I guess you could say kind of the cadence of the keystrokes are going to have some more human-like variation between them than your typical, you know, machine-like, uh, you know, as fast as we can inject keystrokes. But anyway, that right there is one of the coolest reverse shells I've ever seen. You can find this for yourself over in uh, Payload Hub, uh, over at payloads.hack5.org. Uh, you know, mad props over here on this payload. This is, is just incredible. And there are some really wicked ones uh, for you to go ahead and check out. And I, I, I love that this really gives you kind of a taste of some of the cool new things that are possible with Payload Studio, especially uh, with version 1.3. I mean, uh, you know, the, the way that this is working with Injectvar and then being able to inject a variable that holds a scan code or, or a key code, as it were, is really cool. I will note though, I do wanna just make sure that I don't give you the wrong impression here, uh, and this is spelled out in the change log, that inject var, that new syntax, is not a replacement for the translate extension. And so it's only going to uh, allow you to inject variables that hold a scan code. Okay, so you can't just do, and, and as we know from variables in DuckyScript, uh, they're for booleans and integers. So you can't do var foobar equals I am inside your computer and then expect to var inject that. You would still need to use the translate extension for that, but we've done a you know video on extensions and you should go and check that out. Anyway, I'm just really impressed with this payload. You should go and check it out, payloads.hack5.org. That's where you can find more awesome ones like this. Uh, and I will see you on the next one. Until then, I'm just reminding you, trust your techno less. Three, two. Ophir. No. Euphoria. Ophiri. Euphoria. 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 Yeah, Euphoria. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and pen test products at hack5.org.